the our innovation is in qualified learning in Tanzania. So we knew that the traditional ways of learning that we are accustomed to either learn from classes or they will learn from libraries or they will learn from laboratories or they can learn from each other tuition classes. And we also factored the cost of those opportunities. And as, as any innovator would do, we started thinking of an alternative way and sometimes supplementary way of learning and ensuring that for those who do not have access typical ways of learning, they are still able to learn and access education. So we created web and mobile platforms to enable them to access the entire secondary school curriculum, covering learning notes, quizzes, discussion forum. They can even access a virtual teacher who is able to respond to their questions on time. They're able to access the, the syllabus, the, the, formal guideline, the formal guidelines of curriculum from the Ministry of Education. They're also able to converse with each other and converse with other teachers who are also registered in the platform. So ideally what we really aim is to improve learning outcomes of young people who are in secondary schools in Tanzania who are in secondary How extensive? Much. Students, teachers, no. Wow, well. Wow. It's been it's been quite um, it's been quite a journey. We've just celebrated our five years, and in the last five years, we've had over one point five million users. And I think uh, when we were starting to direct, it, it was just an idea. And of course, we were told that um, it's innovative, but Tanzanians are not ready for such platforms to learn through technology. And what is so interesting is that, as as what Jacqueline was just saying, if you are meeting a demand. If it's something which people actually need, they will actually drive the agenda. For how you. do you know people? Or how did you know people need it? Um, there's, there's a lot of research, and so we really relied on statistics from the government. So, like we, we usually refer back to, to, the, to the best. Yes, for instance, oh, there's the basic education statistics, um, Tanzania Best, which is from the Ministry of Education, and you can clearly see with that statistic, with those statistics, that there's a serious demand of people. In Tanzania, there's a serious demand of improved infrastructure in schools. There's a demand of textbooks in schools. There's a demand of laboratories in schools. We've seen several campaigns drive toward learning, I mean, toward desks, toward textbooks, toward laboratories, toward computer labs. And so using statistics, we are really data-driven. And so we make all our decisions based on data, either from our own research or from other stakeholders' research, and Mm -hmm. That's very. You said it all. Um, obviously, an ongoing um, or many problem. Teachers, so teachers, schools. You don't have buildings. Education can be impacted under the shadow of tree. Somebody has. Do have that. How successful? Interestingly, when we started, we really focused on students, and we never really focused on teachers as our primary target market. But over time, and as I was actually looking at our data last week, we have now over 40,000 registered teachers. And that came in through, we started knowing about teachers through testimonies of teachers who are using our platform, who would write in requesting some specific topics or specific resources, teachers started writing in requesting for things like lesson plans, things like um, templates for quizzes, for exams. And that's when we knew that we can actually also provide resources. So instead of just providing learning resources to students, we can also provide resources. And once we started doing that, the number really grew. So, like we grew automatically from like 10,000 teachers to like 40,000 who we have now. And teachers are like students, one teacher can actually impart that knowledge, as you're saying, to a lot of students. And a teacher, unlike a student as well, a student will actually graduate from four and perhaps move on I mean, to other levels of education, but a teacher will keep on teaching. And so that knowledge that, uh, that, we have, that we've given that teacher keeps on being um, re repeated, and there's that relationship that we create with them to keep on using the platform.
So I think teachers are still paramount to the success of education in Tanzania and I mean the world generally. And I, I really think um, we, we have to do so much more. And our focus this year is also to really focus on improving teachers' professional development. Raja, this, I, mean, I, I suppose you know, you are aware of you know, we, we don't have a reading culture. Reading is a bit of a problem, where we all agree. Very few people really put them reading books, let alone even any publication. Can you expensive one? They're expensive. Um, and without reading, you, you, you cannot really learn a lot. So, is, uh, is this reading culture part of your uh, uh, aspect of, of innovation on your website? It's, it's not an aspect, but we are really keen on strengthening life skills. So we do provide life skills also as resources for youth mm. development. We, the first four years, we really focused on the mainstream curriculum, something which we felt that they need and the data shows that they need. They need to access just typical subjects, history, biology, mathematics, and mm. learn from them because it's, it's just a goal that was saying the, the parents, the students, the teachers, they all want to do well in the national exams and acquire that knowledge for beyond, um, beyond, beyond school purposes. And we're really, we're really interested now in moving past that to also incorporate other skills that a young person needs for their own personal development. So reading culture can naturally fall into life because I'm personally an avid reader and I think it's something which can go a long way in somebody. Um, sorry, pin her down. <laughs> she's, she's a gratee, my, my dear <laughs> panelist. Um, you referred with learning processes. We're aware there's too much teaching these days, and um, recent reports by the National Council come up revealed that uh, teaching is still a problem. Even spend as well as 57 something um, students in one institution in the community. And uh, concentration questions is a, a problem. And how to answer questions is a problem. I understand the examination room, people. Instead of answering questions, they draw famous bongo flavor <laughs> artists. <laughs> how, how do you, do you suggest how we, we 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 address this, and maybe it will help national examination also and teachers who are you are also target to avoid them. I think I think cheating in in exams as 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 old and as cliche as this may sound, I think it's just an outcome of lack of preparation. And the question is what makes teachers and students or schools in general not prepare for those exams? Then that comes down to the issue of what resources do they have to be able to prepare well um, on the side of students and what resources do teachers have to enable their students to do well. And again, as a school, what priority are they placed on learning for their students in that particular school to enable them to prepare well for the national exams. So I think it's an issue of preparation. Um, I'm fortunate that I went, in, I went to schools that are not, like, they're not international schools, but they're, they're very focused on, on really learning and preparation from the, from the minute you step into the school. And I think that, that differentiates a person who cheats and a person who has learned over time. The accumulation of knowledge can just happen within the last three months of your form four <coughs> or your form six exam. Unlike, unlike the cramming. Cramming, yes. So I because think there's this, sorry to cut you short, there's this tendency which I've come to learn. Yeah. yeah. The students in, don't push themselves to searching, looking, uh, researching for knowledge, so rather than just sit and be 
expelled right. by the teacher or not. If that is not happening, the teacher becomes... Uh, and that is one of the beauty of learning on technology. If you're learning on a website or on, on an application, you're yes. actually able to navigate, you're actually able to search for skills, what you need to learn yourself. And in the process, you're not just learning something, but you're also acquiring digital skills. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah. But, 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 sorry, Ken, I'm still with you. <laughs> Faradja, to be able to succeed in the use of technology, particularly as you have to know what you really want. I mean, to, to search, for example, to Google, you have to know what you want to go. Now, if you don't even accessing Google search engine or the other engine even you want, it can be a problem. This is this is seems to be a problem for many of us, not at primary or secondary. I understand even at the university, some of the professors who come here for the program they do say that now garbage in, garbage out. So how, how do you address that? So on our platform, because it's an academic platform, every content that is there is structured according to the learning process of student school. So. There are classes and their subjects. So even if you don't know what to search, let's say you go on our web platform and you, and you, you put in history or you put in geography, you will be able to access all the topics that you must learn for geography for that class. So even if you didn't know what you have to learn, you'll find it there and be able to select what you have to learn. But again, it, it, it also builds that inquisitive mind to search and look for something. Or maybe even try something that they didn't even know that they have to learn, but then or they didn't know exist, but then they're able to search and acquire that knowledge. 